Welcome to episode 6 of the Molehill Report. In this episode we have a short critical obituary of Peter Lambon Wilson, also known as Hakim Bay, who died last month, author of the influential Temporary Autonomous Zone. It's boiling hot in Berlin, um, so I don't know, trying to focus my, my ideas a bit. <laughs> On May 22nd, the author Peter Lamborn Wilson, also known as Hakim Bay, died. Born in 1945, he was something of a mystical hippie anarchist with many books to his two names. He is best known as the author of the text The Temporary Autonomous Zone, or TAS, first published in 1991, a book with considerable influence on in the underground festival and uh, party scenes. I first came across Lambon Wilson uh, as an editor at Semiotexte, then read the TAS, um, then uh, Pirate Utopias, a book about um, utopian pirate communities in the Caribbean from the 16th to the 19th century, which he wrote under his real name. Um, and which struck me more as a work of fiction than as history writing, but it had some, some inspiring moments in there. Um, the following book, written again, published again under the pen name Hakim Bay, Millennium from 1996, was just plain bad and I lost, and politically um, unacceptable, and I lost interest in the author. In the meantime, however, uh, the influence of the TAS concept seemed to grow. The irony that it was so well received in circles connected with electronic music was not lost on the author himself, since he was quite anti-technological in his outlooks, quoting um, Arkham Bay, the Ravers were amongst my biggest readers. I wish they would rethink all that techno stuff. They didn't get that part of my writing. Quote cool end. In Dataside 10 from 2008, I wrote in my article Radical Intersections, which deals with the overlaps of radical politics and um, festival and technical culture, electronic music, underground countercultures. The task became a much used slogan for mobilization and provided a theoretical framework for some in the free party scene. Apparently no one noticed what a hodgepodge the book was, deriving ideas from anarchism, neo-primitivism, post-structuralism, 17th century pirates, dropouts of the American West, Gabriele D'Annunzio and the first Munich Council Republic to arrive in the present with cyberpunk and the first manifestations of the internet. The basic idea is not unappealing. Quote from the book, the task is like an uprising which does not engage directly with the state, a guerrilla operation which liberates an area of land, of time, of imagination, and then dissolves itself to reform elsewhere, else when, before the state can crush it. Quote end. However, the historical examples used in the book often don't withstand closer scrutiny. Little reliable information is available about pirate settlements and newly formed nomadic tribes of escaped slaves, deserters, outlaws and Indians in the North America of the 18th century. As such, they can serve as a projection screen for some of the sound system crews seeing themselves as tribes. But where there is enough information, 
base descriptions often turn to be totally falsified. For example, he describes the takeover of the city of Fiume by pre-fascist forces under the leadership of the writer Gabriele D'Annunzio as a kind of permanent party, a rather dubious claim, to put it nicely. The notoriously unreliable, confused research made Lampon Wilson slash Hakim Bey a guru of lifestyle libertarianism. At best, his texts have a dreamy utopian quality about them. At worst, they descended into apologism of pedophilia, which took the form of poetry and articles for the newsletter of the renowned pedophilia advocacy organization NAMBLA, North American Man-Boy Love Association, but also in other texts such as that he called um, Essays in Islamic Heresy dealing with a supposed sacred pederasty in Persian Sufism. Interesting is that these connections are not disputed, but still Lampon Wilson's apologism, if not promotion of pedophilia, is brushed under the carpet, sometimes under the pretext of keeping the man and his work apart, which doesn't make any sense in this case. In his text Amour Fou, something he nicked from Breton and also collected in the, in the TAS uh, pocketbook, um, he drops a series of hints that were all too easily overlooked at the time. For example, promoting the refusal to work for a living is pretty easy if, like Wilson, you had a trust fund to keep the money coming in. And fantasizing about getting, quote, molested by children seems pretty much a pedophile fantasy reversing the roles in abusive relations. Another note right between the two could be and has been interpreted as opposing abortion. Hakim Bey represents the most flawed forms of individualistic anarchism or libertarianism. And it is not surprising that he um, quotes Nietzsche on the last page of TAS, quote, liberation is realized in struggle this is the essence of Nietzsche's self-overcoming. Something that is far removed from the project of proletarian self-emancipation. <laughs>